Hi, I'm Todd Ballard, Executive Director here at Camp Timberley. And I'm Colleen Kubiak, I'm the Marketing Director. We're here today to do our first ever Camp Convo. We're gonna drive around, show you Timberley, learn a little bit more about the camp and about Todd. We're on a brand new 2024 Evolution, I don't really even know what that means, but it's <laughs> Sweet Golf Cart. Come join us. <laughs> All right, starting off nice and easy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been in ministry for now three decades. So I'm a preacher's kid, so my whole life has just been the church world, and I spent 28 years in the church world pastoring or being a worship leader uh, until this thing came about. Yes, so then what brought you to Timberley? So about a year and a half ago, a little over a year and a half ago, I get a call from my brother-in-law, which is Greg Cunis, from the cutest auto group saying, bro, there's a camp, Christian camp, that's gonna close down. I can't let it close down. You gotta come look at it. You gotta pray about it with me. Cause he knew I had 28 years of ministry experience and I had recently said I needed a break from the church world. I've been doing it for my whole entire career. And so we came out here and we prayed about it. We looked at the camp. We could not believe this place was gonna close down. And uh, we took over at that point in time. He bought the camp. I came in as the executive director and all we're gonna do is try to make this place continue to glorify God by more kids coming to Jesus. Beautiful. Camp is under new ownership. Yep. Has the mission changed? Have the values changed here? It's actually a great question because I think a lot of people would wonder that. Hi guys. Um, but the truth is, it's still God's camp. It's always been his camp. The mission is still, how do we bring more glory to God by more kids coming to Jesus? And scripture says that heaven rejoices when someone gives their heart to God, a sinner, what happens when a child gives their heart to God? How awesome is that? So the mission is still the same. It's still kids hearing about Jesus. What's up kids? How are we guys doing? Good seeing you guys. There they are, coming to Jesus as we speak. There we go, right? <laughs> on the zip line. It's kind of a come to, moment, come to Jesus moment where you stand on the 52 feet. Yes. And it's like this big of an area you stand and you're like, oh. Do you know where you're going? Because you're going to step off. God's got gotcha. you. What are our top priorities here at camp over the next year? Uh, the biggest priority is that we just fix the business model. The business model was hurting financially. And so, you know, you can have a thriving ministry, but that doesn't mean that it can sustain itself. And it, we got to get that where we fix that. And I think we're, I mean, when you look at all of our finances, um, even though there's a lot more to come in because there's so much deferred maintenance, you're talking 600 acres, 90 something buildings that have a lot of deferred maintenance that needs to be taken care of. Uh, but our numbers are still trending up. And uh, so I believe we're gonna get to the place where the ministry truly can flourish. And that's really what it's about. It's can we make a sustainable business model that then can put money away and then help take care of the depreciation as years go by so that more campers can know Jesus. All right, how can people looking to support the camp help contribute to all of our goals over the next year or so? I think it's twofold. Hi ladies, how we doing? Good. <laughs> We're over at the ranch right now. It stinks, it smells like peat. Uh, two <laughs> things that we could possibly do, the, the, the two greatest things we could do is prayer. That's nothing like prayer. I mean, the book of Acts, Peter is in prison and it says the church was earnestly praying for Peter and yeah. shackles come off. The prison cell opens up, the gates open up, and he's freed. I think God did that here when he had put it on Greg's heart to purchase the camp. Uh, but then also, there's a lot of financial need just across the board. There's so many things that we need to do. A lot of our roofs need to be replaced. So many of our uh, golf carts need to be replaced. We're in a brand new golf cart right now, but the truth is we just pers personally bought this, uh, I don't know, within the last month. And before that, we were down to like two golf carts running in our fleet. So <laughs> everything's old, um, but that's part of it, right? It's, that means there's been a lot of life change at this campus for many, yeah. many years. Okay, Todd, you've been here for how long? A year and months. a half. Yeah, yeah, almost a year and a half. Share with us a favorite memory here at camp. I think it's probably this um, this winter extreme. We were. Winter Extreme was awesome. I mean, it was completely packed. You couldn't get more kids. We were sold out every weekend. And that's awesome just in itself that kids are hearing about God. But there was a moment that I was at a chapel on a Saturday night and there were a handful of girls 
that were crying so hard, like sobbing with God, because God had kind of touched their heart. Like it's that moment where the kindness of God that leads you to repentance, yeah. it's different than just hearing about it through your parents, but like it, it became real that night to the point that it took their breath away. And I remember just watching, and I have a 15 year old daughter and a 60 year old son, and I'm like, I remember those moments for, the, for my kids. Mm -hmm. And what it does, and it triggers something that's so much bigger than what we just told them, it becomes a personal relationship. So by far, those are some of my best memories, what happens in the chapels here at Camp Timberland. Where do you see camp going in the next three, five, ten years? Uh, the goal is that we just get back to a bunch more campers on ground. Uh, I want to I want to give them the best experience that they possibly can. I mean, it's why we're getting ready to build a climbing tower uh, here in the fall because we want to give the coolest activities. Uh, we want to give them a chapel experience that just blows them away. I mean, honestly, from somebody coming from the pastoring world. My hope is that all the fun activities bring them here, but then they leave and their favorite thing was what happened at chapel. So I'm hoping that within the next three to five years, the camp is completely packed. We have used our resources and stewarded them the, well, the way God would want us to steward them. Um, and then more kids just come into Christ and to the point that they become the light of the world inside their schools and in their own peer group. That's how the kingdom of God works, disciples making disciples. So that's my goal is that three to five years, the camp is flourishing. A lot of the stuff that was deferred maintenance, we've taken care of, we've fixed, uh, we've uh, invigorated, if you will, what was happening and we just made it the best we possibly can. Beautiful. All right, is there anything else you want the Timberley community and beyond to know? I think I just want them to know that it's, it's in good hands. Yeah. That our whole, like, our board of directors, uh, the staff, everybody's here for the right reason. We're all just wanting to see the kingdom of God further right here with kids. That mission of young people encountering Christ through a, a dynamic camp experience is real. And so we're offering all that here. And so as it's went through a lot of turmoil through the years, a lot of changing of seats, especially in my position as the executive director, I just want people to know that it's in good place, not because I got it all figured out. I, it's my first time ever being an executive director. What I do know is that God's in full control and he had it planned out before any of us could even know that he was gonna save it and take it to the next level. So right. Timberly, the future looks bright and God gets all the glory. It's pretty awesome. Thanks everybody. Mm -hmm.